In today's video, I'm gonna talk about the top five mistakes people make before moving or living in Chesapeake, Virginia. And we're starting right now. Hey, my name is Sam Sansalone, and I'm a real estate agent in the Hampton Roads area that goes from the border of Virginia Beach down to the border all the way up through Williamsburg, and I do videos every week about living and moving to the area. So today we're talking about my top five things that I think people make mistakes about when they live or they plan to live uh, in Chesapeake. Now, there's a lot of things that are great about Chesapeake, but there are some things I think people assume that are incorrect or that when they get here are much different than what they expected before they came here. So number one is properly understanding the lack of things to do in Chesapeake. So Chesapeake is a huge city. A lot of, a lot of people, about 240,000 people. Um, it's a big city in a lot of ways. It's also a small town in a lot of ways. It's known for its country. It's known for its wide open space. It's got a lot of land and it's known for its school districts. It's known for its just comfort of living, suburbia, lots of that kind of stuff. But it doesn't have a lot of stuff to do. There are lots of outdoor things. So for example, the uh, Great Dismal Swamp I mentioned before. Um, some great parks in, in Chesapeake. Chesapeake City Parks are one of my, my favorites. A couple good bowling alleys, a couple golf courses. So it's not barren. But what people expect is that there's at least some extra elements, nightlife, um, more restaurants. There's just not as much of that. And so you'll notice that Chesapeake being so big, it feels like a small town in a lot of ways and you have to drive a lot farther to get to other things. For example, nightlife. You're gonna be going to the beach, you're gonna be going to the town to town center, maybe Greenbrier, which is probably the best option in Chesapeake, but it, that even that isn't saying too much. Uh, and you can go to downtown Norfolk. None of those places are too far away, like between 15 to 20 minutes, upwards of 30 plus minutes. But if you're wanting something close by, that feeling of being in the middle of the action, that's not Chesapeake. And I do think that people real, uh, underestimate how much you feel like you're in the country, even though you're not too far away from other things, it just feels like it. Google, Google Chesapeake things to do and see what comes up. You'll notice all some of those, that stuff I just mentioned, but in addition to that, they'll include things that are in other cities for things to do that are sometimes the most interesting because there's not as much in Chesapeake itself. So that's kind of an indica indicator of uh, like what I'm talking about here. So that leads me to number two, which is on the flip side, assuming it's too far away from other things. So I just mentioned the fact that it's in the country, it feels like it's in the country, not as many things to do. Then you're saying, Sam, why are you now flipping the script on me? Well, because there's some nuance here. So it does feel like I just said, it feels like you're far away from things. But at the same time, you're actually not that far away from things to where, you know, if you don't mind driving a little bit, then you might really like the idea of being in Chesapeake because you can get the balance of both things. You can get in a little bit more of a, of a suburban, kind of a relaxed feel, but you can get to other things if you want to. Like I said, 20-ish minutes away from downtown Norfolk and a lot of the most places in Chesapeake, 25, or, or also 25, 30 minutes away from the beach. You've got you know, 20, 25 minutes away from town center in Virginia Beach. So on one hand, you feel like, hey, it's country, get it. But on the other hand, you're actually not too far away from other things. So the, the life hack in this to me is getting in the, the central to north parts of Chesapeake, the, uh, the, the school district that you might want, but also being close to a lot of main roads that can get you to other places in Virginia Beach, uh, in Norfolk. Uh, so you don't feel like you're necessarily in country or in like rural, uh, very rural places. So then going to number three, saying, assuming that the entire city is safe. This is a, tight, a tough uh, subject to talk about. And I will say that as a real estate I can't tell you where to and not to live. However, I would say just know this, that the city of Chesapeake is not all, you know, real quiet, real peaceful. There are various different parts of Chesapeake, and I've talked about this in my pros and cons video of living in Chesapeake, that there are multiple different sectors of Chesapeake, and depending on where in the, which uh, sector you live in, it can influence the total vibe of the, of the city, and it changes completely uh, based on where you live. So for example, South Chesapeake, it's real rural in a lot of places, kind of suburban, like it's that relaxed lifestyle. But if you go towards, for example, the Western Branch area, kind of has a similar feel to it. But in between there, there's other places, like Deep Creek has some real quiet places, some that aren't. Also South Norfolk in the, like the central north part of Chesapeake that totally feels different than, for example, the south part. There's different types of environments here, but to group the entire city in, let's say, oh, well, if you ask a friend, say, hey, how do you like living in Chesapeake? And they might say, oh, 
it's, it's just great. It feels really safe. Well, that might be true, but because Chesapeake has so many different types of areas, you have to be real careful about like doing more research as to where in those city, in the city you're living. And there's a connotation of Chesapeake being a country area. So with the country, the picture in your mind is country, relaxed, nothing going on. And that's true, but there's so many other parts of it. So just don't assume that the entire city is the same. That also bridges to the next thing, which is assuming that all the schools are awesome. <laughs> so people move from Virginia Beach or choose to live in Chesapeake as opposed to Virginia Beach because often about the, uh, because of the school districts. Grassfield, Hickory, Great Bridge are three of the primary ones, also Western Branch on the Western side. Well, there are a lot of school districts in Chesapeake, but they aren't all high ranked on niche.com. If you look on niche.com or greatschools.org, any of those ranking uh, lists, you'll see that there are several that are at the top. People go after Hickory, go after Grassfield, uh, but there are also others that are ranked relatively low. And so just because you're going to Chesapeake, when you're looking at houses, make sure you check to make sure that the school district that you're wanting to go to is where that house is. And sometimes you might not be able to actually even trust what the listing might say. You might have to just do the research for yourself uh, on these school uh, sites to make sure that where you're buying the house is in the school district that you really want it to be in. Now, that then goes to a total different topic that I think is extremely important that people don't realize until they're here for a while is people don't account enough for the bridges and the tolls in Chesapeake. So the bridge thing is super annoying, especially a couple of them. There are several bridges on the western side, there are several bridges on the south and like kind of eastern side, but there are a couple that are worth mentioning that are really important. And that one's called the Great Bridge Bridge, yes. Great Bridge Bridge, <laughs> which is in the Great Bridge area, more of the historic Great Bridge area that connects kind of the northern part of Chesapeake to the southern part on that eastern side of the city. The bridge is cool, uh, but it's in a, very, in a spot that is hasn't really been developed too much as far as like the width of the, the streets. It's starting to, it's getting wider, but because it's almost like a log jam in this section, there can be a lot of traffic already. Then we've got a bridge that is scheduled to lift, usually lifts on the hour. Uh, it can take five, 10 plus minutes for that thing to lift. And if you don't account for that, it can really jack up your travel. And so sometimes you may need to plan around it or go around in other ways. Just accounting for that bridge is a big deal. And so if you look online, if it says, oh, it takes me 18 minutes to get to work. Well, you got to factor the bridge in. It could take you 30 on sometimes if you draw that bridge at the wrong time. In addition to that, the Centerville Turnpike Pike Bridge, which is near uh, Centerville Turnpike and Mount Pleasant uh, Road, closer to that, that rural section that we we're talking about, because it's the bridge that crosses over the intercoastal waterway. It opens on the hour and a half hour from 8.30 to 4, Monday through Friday. And so if you make a plan, you have to go across that bridge from the south or north side, uh, and you don't account for that bridge, it could open and take five Five minutes it might take a couple minutes, but it might take 10 plus minutes for that bridge to open. It's super frustrating and it won't show up on Google Maps if you're just searching online trying to figure out your, your commute time. So this is a big deal if you're trying to drive through this area and you're trying to get to a place pretty quickly, you have to definitely account for this bridge if you do plan to go back and forth around this area. The other one I want to mention is on the Route 17 area closer to the west side of the Grassfield School District near Deep Creek, which is the Dominion Boulevard uh, area and that is a toll as well. And so it's not a Big, a bridge that will that will um, lift and create delays that way, but it has a toll that if you live on the south side and southwest near that Grassfield Hickory area and you want to go north uh, towards Norfolk, downtown Norfolk and 464 and for example in the uh, uh, western part of Virginia Beach, you, got, you may have to cross that toll to get to the, where you want to go the fastest and that toll can get ex expensive. Right now for Easy Pass cars, it's $1.28 per car, but also for not Easy Pass, it's over $3.00. So you better get your easy pass if you're gonna be in this section. I would say get your easy pass if you're gonna be anywhere in Hampton Roads, to be honest with you. And another bridge is the High Rise Bridge. Now this one goes around, kind of cuts through the middle of Chesapeake, and it's the bridge that connects the area on 64, Interstate 64 from the Western Branch side all the way through uh, the rest of Chesapeake up to Virginia Beach. So it's a great connecting uh, interstate, and this bridge is one you have to go through if you're gonna use this road. And so it's a high rise, it's a nice kind of view. It's high, but it also it creates a lot of backups. Now this one is not told right now. Soon this road will be doubled, this high rise section. So that will mean more cars, more space, and less traffic in general going from place to place. So this will be a lot easier soon, but it still is a bridge that is worth mentioning because it still backs up quite a bit right now and still might back up a lot even after it is renovated. So if you have any questions about living and moving to Chesapeake or the rest of Hampton Road, 
roads, please let me know. I have my contact information in the description. You can reach out to me at any time and I'll do whatever I can to help you relocate to this area. That's what I do and I will see you on the next video.